guys, welcome back to our channel. Today we're going to be doing another Bible study. We're going to be continuing on in the story of Noah. This is part of our restudying childhood biblical stories. And we're just diving deeper into these stories because whenever we learn them as kids, they are definitely not as detailed as they actually are. Yeah, and they hit different as an adult than yes. what they did as a kid, too. We also did a study on Jonah. That's on our channel, too, if you want to watch that. Today we are in chapter 8. If you're interested in the, the beginning of the story, you can go back and watch. There's two other videos, chapter 6 and chapter 7. They're on our channel. Other than that, we're going to jump in and read chapter 8, and we'll just talk about them as we go. So, let's do it. But God remembered Noah and all of the beasts and all of the livestock that were with him in the ark and God made a wind blow over the earth and the water subsided the fountains of the deep and the windows of the heavens were closed the rains from the heavens were restrained and the waters receded from the earth continually at the end of the 150 days the water had abated and in the seventh month on the 17th day of the month the ark came to rest on the mountains of Ararat the waters continued to abate until the 10th month. In the 10th month, on the first day of the month, the tops of the mountains were seen. I find it weird that it says God remembered Noah. Like, do you think God forgot Noah? No, never. I forgot I told that guy to go build a boat and put all the animals on it, and I was going to create a flood because I wanted to get rid of the world. Oh, yeah, I forgot. I left Noah out there on a boat. So this is where it switches from them being in the ark and the flood happening to the flood ending and then they're going to be able to come out of the ark so god created a wind and it subsided the water and helped dry up the land so then it says at the end of 150 days the water had abated and in the seventh month on the 17th day of the month the ark came to rest on mount of ararat 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 Mounts of Ararat indicated a range of mountains of which Mount or Ararat is the highest. Mm. Interesting. The text does not, however, name a specific mountain on which the ark came to rest. It's a group of mountains, but it doesn't specify which, which one. Mountain. Verses 6 through 12 say, At the end of 40 days, Noah opened the window of the ark that he had made and sent forth a raven. It went to and fro until the waters were dried up from the earth. Then he sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters had subsided from the face of the ground. But the dove found no place to set her foot, and she returned to him to the ark, for the waters were still on the face of the whole earth. So he put his hand out and took her and brought her into the ark with him. He waited another seven days, and again he sent forth the dove out of the ark, and the dove came back to him in the evening, and behold, in her mouth was a freshly plucked olive leaf. So Noah knew that the waters had subsided from the earth, and then he waited another seven days and sent forth the dove, and she did not return to him anymore. So I'm, I'm out of here. No more ark. This is just like the gradual process of the water going down, and Noah wondering when they are going to be able to come out of the ark, which I'm sure he was very ready to do. I would be very ready to get yes. out of there. So he sent a dove to see if the ground was... What was the purpose of sending the raven, though? Yeah, did it say? No. It just says he sent forth a raven. It went to and fro until the waters were dried up from the earth. Then he sent a dove. What was the purpose of him sending the raven first? Well, then he sent the dove, and the dove came back eventually with a olive twig. And then the next time he let the dove out, she didn't come back. She said, bye, bye, bye. In one of the other videos, we were talking about how if all the trees and bushes and all that stuff were destroyed in the flood and it had to start fresh or if God just sprung up all that new stuff. So it makes you wonder, did God just spring up a tree for the dove to get an olive branch off of? Or were there trees still standing after the flood? Still wondering. And it'll never be answered. One of these days. When we all get to heaven. <laughs> you think God's just going to sit down and answer all our questions, or you think we'll just have the, have knowledge of... I don't know. We're all going to sit at a table and... Just have discussions. Eat dinner and... Bible talk. study <laughs> with Jesus. Bible study with Jesus. <laughs> so because the dove brought back the leaf, then Noah knew that all the waters had subsided and they could now leave the ark. I read verse 13 through 19. In the 601st year, in the first month, 
the first day of the month, the waters were dried from off the earth. And Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked, and behold, the face of the ground was dry. In the second month, on the 27th day of the month, the earth had dried out. Then God said to Noah, Go out from the ark, you and your wife and your sons and your sons' wives, with you. Bring out with you every living thing that is with you of all flesh, birds and animals, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, that they may swarm on the earth and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. So Noah went out and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him. Every beast, every creeping thing, and every bird, everything that moves on the earth went out by families from the ark. So we're going to share the commentary on verses 15 through 17 that says, God's instructions to Noah are reminiscent of his instructions that were in chapter 1, especially the statement that Noah and his family are to be fruitful and multiply on the earth. So just points to that's the reason that God saved this family back. Noah was obedient to God and him and his family and all of the animals and that were in the ark left out of the ark. So then the last little section is verses 20 through 22, and it's God's covenant with Noah. It says, Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and took some of every clean animal and some of every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And when the Lord smelled the pleasant aroma, the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground because of man, for the intention of man's heart is evil from his youth. That's interesting. Youth as in like teenage or youth as in child. Hmm. Anyway, neither will I ever again strike down every living creature as I have done. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. So Noah is making sacrifices on the altar that he built to express his gratitude for him taking care of his family and delivering them from the flood and not destroying them along with everybody else. So the Lord smelled the sweet aroma from Noah's sacrifice and that is when he made the covenant with Noah that he would never curse the ground again because of man. His covenant with Noah is that he will never flood the earth and remove all the living creatures, everything that is made of flesh again. And while the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. So the way that God made for the world and everything to kind of do its thing the way that it does its ebb and flow if you will he would not tamper with that again i guess okay guys so that is it for this week's study over noah next week will be the last study which will be chapter nine and that is where we will end with the story of noah so be sure to join us again next week for that if you guys just like hanging out with us, we also post videos on Wednesdays and Fridays. Wednesdays, we are doing weird Bible words with Amber and Mariah. So just figuring out what certain words of the Bible mean and what they meant then, what they mean now, and how they differ, and just so that we can better understand what we're reading. And then on Fridays, we do fun videos, usually makeup, fashion, food, DIYs, arts and crafts, whatever strikes us as fun that week, so... If you do enjoy our videos, be sure to like and subscribe to our channel. And if you want to be notified when we upload a video, be sure to hit the little bell after you subscribe. We hope you guys have a good day, have a good week, and don't forget to shine. We'll see you in the next one. Bye! Bye.